Hi, welcome to FS Derek. Um, we, uh, we're in the uh, Beechcraft B200 King Air today. It's raining again. Um, in fact, it's actually a nice day out. So what I think what I'll do is I'll just uh, set the weather to the local weather. Grab the real world no weather. Here we go. You have to watch it because it does it. It does it so quickly, especially if you're um, used to flight simulator. No, and you can see here where I am in the southeast of England. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty clear isn't it that's it that's what I can see outside so it's such a nice Sunday morning I've decided to uh, take the old uh, King Air up for a spin so we're going to go to Newcastle um, which is I'm in the southeast of England Newcastle's on the east coast of England um, probably about halfway up if you don't include the sort of the farther northern reaches of Scotland so um, let's get cracking so the uh, startup routine again I'm going to just get rid of that for convenience because in practice you wouldn't need to that wouldn't have struck the controls you just reach around the back of them so we're going to do battery which is the source of all things good and we're going to uh, do the right hand starter and <clears throat> give the number two engine a, some fuel there it goes Now what I've done is I've generated a flight plan because um, can you hear that noise cycling, recycling? We've come across that before, haven't we? I don't know how realistic that is. I'll turn this down because you know the engines are working. You don't need to see them working. Now what we do is we put the generator on so we've got some electricity to assist the battery and we can turn the starter off for that one, turn the starter on for the other one. Give it a second to spin up and then condition lever as we've discussed just uh, injects a small amount of fuel in to pretty well adjust the idle tick over so that's both engines working so we'll cancel the starter for that one it's not really run up yet so there's no point um, putting the generator on don't know stress the engine while it's uh, still cold and starting up so We'll wait for the needles to come up. Let's just zoom in on here. What we're waiting for this needle to come up on the uh, engine number one to speed. Now we've got one generator going, so we'll put the avionics on. And uh, here's the flight plan. So to get there, you. Um, we're on the, this is on the nav screen here, so you can see we can switch between the chapters on the nav screen. So we go to flight plan and we switch to the, with the small, the inner button, switch to the flight plan and I think it's enter. And that takes you straight back to nav. But um, if you, if we click to the second page on the nav, you can see here we've got the route here. And we're taking off on 2-4, which is so down to the left, down to the southwest and we'll be immediately turning to the right to climb up through uh, Wessel and uh, Lam Lambourne, the Lambourne VOR and if you want to see those you can see them all listed there and <clears throat> you can um, uh, if that happens just press clear straight away and you can take the cursor down through all the various points with there we are November Tango, Newcastle being our, our final destination. So we're not going to work with air traffic control because it's a bit uh, buggy and a bit frustrating. Let's get that second generator on. Let's do what um, we need to do with the bleed air because remember we suffocate if we don't put the bleed air on. Let's uh, squawk 4700 which is the sort of the pretty uh, normal squawk for this plane we're not we don't need any flaps I've started up on the runway because um, the taxiways at South End which is where we're starting off are pretty uh, abysmal and um, not really very wide so we'll save ourselves that fuel we've got uh, 700 pounds our standard 700 pounds per wing so that should be plenty to get up to Newcastle we can we put the landing lights on we don't really need the taxi lights let's just uh, look down here <coughs> we do need the um, nav lights recognition lights 
beacon lights and strobe lights. Technically, we should have put the beacon on before we started the engine just to give everybody a warning. Let's have a quick look at the uh, temperature. Temperature outside is 04. That sort of uh, fits in with what I've got 06, but it's clear, so we're not really flying through any. Um, we won't be flying through icing levels, I don't think. Now we've got a master warning and master caution going. Have a quick look outside. That's because we've got the passenger door open. Let's just do the left cursor key to go around and show that. So up cursor key to get an overhead view. We've got the um, American livery on here. They've got a British livery, but it's an RAF livery, so it's a shame they don't have a British civilian livery. I could probably download one. I mean, you know, there's tons of free stuff for this. The Q and H the, in millibars is uh, in inches of mercury is 30.27. So let's just shut the door. Shut the passenger door. There we are, and now we'll jump in the cockpit. Let's get rid of that. Jump in the cockpit. Have a look round. Make sure everybody's aboard. Give them a quick uh, hello. That's it. Well, we're, we've got we're um, loaded up with seven people on the uh, weight and balance. So. don't know that seems to be a bug you don't seem to be able to get that to close like that but um, if you're going to close it what you have to do is you have to open it and then close it again so that's just a little bug there and, and press 7 on the keypad to get back to my favorite default view now as far as the lighting goes it's a little bit dim in here so I'm going to turn the lights on and then but uh, we, we can turn the uh, overhead floods down with the mouse wheel there we are so we've got everything illuminated so just do one last check are we happy with everything don't think we've forgotten anything have we um what we need to do is uh, set the um, initial climb altitude so let's say we're cleared initially to 12,000 feet or what will be flight level 120 flight level 120 there we are, and um, the on the on the heading bug. What's our first heading going to be? Well, if we have a quick look at the whole flight plan, we can see here Wessel is uh, on a heading of 310. So, if I get the autopilot up, we look at the heading bug here, and just click and drag on here. We'll drag that up to 310, and so that when we do engage the autopilot, we can just click autopilot engage on the heading bug, and it will turn onto 310. Now, what we will probably want to do is set our standard climb of 3,000 feet and just fly it straight on the nav, uh, which means it's going to be very automated and and very smooth. Um, so, we, you know, but the heading bugs there is that you know I've always said is to forces the plane to do if it absolutely will not do what you want it to do then you force it to do what you want to do with the heading bug but in practice what we're going to do is um, fly on the nav and um, here that means changing this over from v -loc, v -loc, which will VHF lo or VOR localizer to GPS and that's got a message set a course to 233 now why does it say that okay go back to the flight plan this is it 235 it, 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 it sort of it's taking its figure from here because it's sort of working out to get from where I am to um, what is effectively the airfield where I'm starting I need to fly to about two feet at this at this sort of bearing um, so we can ignore that and just go straight for the 310 so that's all the theory out of the way let's uh, get round to the practice and uh, we uh, um, call for um, Departure, get a taxi clearance, radio check, etc. Q and H is the last thing I need to do. Um, what did we say? It was three zero point two seven. You can see um, it's not right because we're at four hundred and seventy nine feet. So if we put this to three zero two seven, uh, get it right. That's it. The runway is forty feet off the ground off, uh, above sea level which is um, sounds about right doesn't it so everything looks fine so let's just release the brakes and then I'm going to hold it on the brakes and just feed some power into the engines we want our 2100 rpm on the torque 
but they seem to be revving up don't they and it's straining to go so let's put our 2100 in and while well, keeping it straight on the runway once we feed 2100 in which is taking a little bit longer than normal we can there we are so climbing at 120 positive rate of climb so gear up and on the autopilot engage the autopilot fly it on the nav put it in a climb and ask it to climb at about 3000 feet a minute and relax up we go Very nice. Get the old uh, table out and uh, have a game of cards or something. Now, last time I sat in the back too long, we stalled the plane, so we'll just jump back in and make sure everything's fine. You'll notice that the ITT is falling, so we need to keep feeding more torque in through the uh, power lever. The we are climbing a little bit slowly, so I'm going to reduce that rate of climb, and I. I think in future we'll probably use 2,500 as a as a rate of climb. Your uh, just so we're we're flying uh, yeah pretty well what we said we were going to on the heading bug, aren't we? And if we uh, let's just clear that message and go back to the. Uh, map moving map here which is page two on the nav panel you can see here that we are the reason why we're, we're slightly to the right of the heading bug is because we took off to the left didn't we and then we had to fly slightly to the right to regain the line and what it'll do is it doesn't it won't go straight to Wessel what it'll do is it'll go straight to that line and it'll plot an intercept course course to the line and then fly along the line so um, that's just a little tip that um, it's worth bearing in mind also, you may say, well, okay, you know, I mean, well, we're pretty well there, aren't we, on here? I mean, you know, it's, we're almost flying the heading bug. <laughs> why, why bother? You know, it's only a degree or two out. Well, there's a couple of answers to that. Is that one is that um, flying a degree or two out over a long distance will can add up, you know? I mean, you know, over a mile being a degree out, is it doesn't mean anything. I'm going to have to keep a real close eye on this because it's getting ready to some serious grief isn't it so let's knock that right down because we don't want to get into a very nose high um, uh, situation where we're and we'll knock the torque up as well because that's starting to fall off quite heavily now um, yeah I'd rather climb at 140 than, than 90 so let's just do that for a second that's a little bit higher than that 1400 it's going to be some awkward number that's difficult to remember isn't it Perhaps 1600. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. 1800. Let's do 1800. It's difficult because as it flies faster, it flies more efficiently. So, in fact, uh, you can ask it to climb. Yeah, come on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. You can ask it to climb at say 1800 feet a minute and it'll climb at 1800 feet a minute at say 150 knots and it'll also climb at 1800 feet a minute at 90 knots. The difference is at 90 it'll be on the edge of stalling and flying extremely inefficiently and climbing extremely inefficiently but it will still do it because obviously it's going so slowly. Um, I think what's happening is that I'm getting the initial climb too steep I think I should probably climb a bit faster so I should probably climb about 140 knots um, say say at sort of 2400 or something and and when it's really steaming along at higher levels and we've climbed up then I can probably um, uh, probably just pair it back rather than have it go back and then have to sort of try and speed it up again but then this is this will do for the time being we're already at 10,000 feet so let's just say we've got a 
a further en route clearance now so we've been cleared to uh, flight level 180 so let's put 180 in there and don't forget if you do if you do that so let's say that we this goes higher than this and you then move this from below your actual altitude to your higher altitude you see us moving there we're actually that tells me that we've just reached Wessel you can see that there so we've turned left so you must you must increase this before you get there if you do it after you get there then it resets the climb do you remember so that on the on here it will cease to be in uh, in climb mode so I was talking about being sort of hyperanal about the heading bug yeah and the answer to that is first of all over long distances a, a degree does make a big difference let's just keep feeding in the torque um, there we go makes it a bit easier I don't want to overrid these engines uh, don't want the SP to bleed off but we're still we're climbing nicely so we're okay we can pr I'll probably just pare back the climb a little bit 1800 feet is fine um, and um, secondly um, you know you must have a complete understanding of the aircraft systems you, you're, if two things don't match you know if 2 plus 2 doesn't equal 4 you need to know why you've got to really absolutely investigate you're just looking for the tiniest thing to not be correct on a plane you know because sometimes a, a, a tiny deviation in heading is the only clue that you've got that you know you're going to fly into a volcano because you've set everything backwards so um you know so i know it helps to have a good uh, an interest and a good sort of skill in mental math to fly a plane and that is true certainly with the navigation and angles and reciprocals and speeds you know distance and times and things like that but um you don't need to be a math whiz to fly a plane but you do need to have a healthy uh interest in self-preservation um which is manifest through a uh, an appreciation of what you know what things should look like when they're normal you know for example i mean all these dials they should all be the same they shouldn't match each other if one if this is on three and a half and this is on four it's not because you've got one sort of quite a good engine and one one sort of not so good engine it's it's because <laughs> something's not right you know uh, the turbine pressures, the props and everything, they should all match. What I'm going to do, because we're flying on flight levels now, I'm going to put this back down to the international standard pressure, which as we know is 1013 millibars, or 29.91 inches of mercury. HP, hectopascals, that's the SI system international unit, isn't it? Hectopascals, millibars is the other is a more sort of conventional way so we talk is I'm going to push the talk all the way forward now because we're pretty well there on as far as we can push the talk so that's the throttle right the way forward and it's still falling so I'm hoping we're not going to overread the engines before uh, get back in the green line and we are still climbing at uh, 140 knots which is brilliant we're at 17,000 feet on route for 18 let's say we've been cleared on route to flight level 220 220 so we're going to carry on climbing we're certainly going fast enough in fact it's uh, climbing even more efficiently now isn't it I could probably put it up a bit don't be afraid to trade airspeed for altitude it's a uh, it's a very well-known trade-off and you can do it the other way you can trade altitude for airspeed if you're slow on the approach just dive and get faster you can't uh, you know there's no point being uh, some massive altitude on the there's no point of being any altitude at all on the approach if you're going to stall and, and and slam into the ground so <clears throat> you're better off if you're a hundred feet above the ground and slow on the approach you're better off 10 feet above the ground and, s and a bit faster yeah because you can always climb up from 10 feet but you can't recover from a stall at 100 and what I'm doing here is the other way round. I can see I've got excess airspeed here. So what I'm doing is I've increased the uh, climb and I'm going to trade some of that airspeed for altitude to climb faster. And that's it. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Now, um, one thing, so it was this one, wasn't it? Yeah. So here we are. Now, um, what we haven't done is set the cabin pressure so I'm going to dial that into 22 which is about there so you can see you can see down here let's just zoom in quickly that um, 
I've set it to uh, 4,000 feet in the cabin which is equates to 22,000 feet outside and the rate is uh, you can read it off this gauge here it's going up at about 15 or, or the altitude going up 1500 so it's being depressurized at 1500 feet and here we have the outside pressure and here we have the cabin pressure at 6000 that beep shows me we're at the right altitude so I'm just going to come back here and just check that we're leveling off Have a quick look outside now it hasn't stopped has it and we really during the climb all the way during that climb we're doing something so it's um, oh look there's my favorite reservoir or is it that one I'm sure that's Heathrow it's very distinctive may not be but I think it is um, yeah so so we've had to do something all the time haven't we land and then we're on our way to Brookman's Park yeah so I'm sure that's Heathrow um, now what's going to happen of course the planes leveled off and the there's PAT power attitude and trim or attitude power and trim is the sort of the acronym you need for in level flight <coughs> basically if you're climbing you do power attitude trim and if you're doing if you're descending I think it's attitude power trim so we're basically what it means is that um, Supposing you're going to climb, the first thing you want to do is, is put, put the power on and then point the nose up and then trim it out so it's sort of in balanced flight. Obviously if you're climbing you wouldn't point the nose up first and then and then worry about whether you've got enough power to climb because by then you might have stalled. So it's power first when climbing, attitude and then trim. And then in the opposite is attitude, power and then trim. So here at the t we're at the top of the climb so the attitude, the plane's set its own attitude, it's set itself in level flight now and the power now you can see is far in excess of what is required to fly at 140 knots and so it's zoomed up to 190 knots and in a single engine plane that you might typically learn to fly in then the, uh, you would be setting the power, you'd be, you'd be managing the power yourself so you would at this point you know possibly cut back on the power you know you might cut the throttle because you're at the top of the climb you wouldn't do it until you've sped up so we're waiting until we speed up and then we're going to then uh, adjust the power for the um, for the cruise now in a twin engine plane really what you to uh, in adjusting the um, there we are now we're about to make another right turn let's just have a quick look out the window again oh look at that a little bit repetitive the tiling there but not too bad is it Uh, run away to Newcastle. Won't be long. Won't be long. Yeah. So, um, in a in a uh, plane which has got a variable pitch propeller, in other words, a fancy propeller that can sort of twist the blades to either cut fine chops off the air or do nice big coarse paddle strokes. Um, as you speed up, you really don't want the prop to be doing fine cuts. You want it to be doing big coarse chops. So it's equivalent to changing up the gear in a car. And the way you do that is with this lever down here, the the uh, prop angle lever. And what you do is you look at this gauges or these gauges here, the propeller RPM. So you'll see as I pull the lever back, you'll see that the RPMs will fall. And that's because the propellers are spinning more slowly and taking bigger bites of the air as they as they go round. So it's, as I say, it's equivalent to Nagar putting in fourth or fifth gear on a motorway where your your engine's turning more slowly, but the wheels are uh, because the wheels are gobbling up more road as you go along. So I don't know what the figures are really on are on the RPM. Perhaps we ought to look those up. But it, we've got a green band all the way from here to here. So what you can do, obviously, is look at look at other things. I mean, you can look at your fuel flow. You can look at your torque. You can look at your airspeed. You know, I mean. Let's let's do a little experiment. We're on eighteen hundred RPM. Let's just cut that to seventeen hundred RPM. We're just over two hundred uh, knots. Whoa! And that's too much. Okay, so we don't uh, we don't want to muck about with that. Let's say seventeen fifty. That seems to be quite uh, quite safe. Uh, we can turn the landing lights off, of course. Um, the the uh, pressure you can see now is uh, pretty well equalised. There's not much in the way of um, pressure going in or out. 
And now, and how much should you pressurize the cabin by? Well, I think the rule of thumb is about half your rate of climb. So um, this is the the uh, rate knob here. Now, I mean, you know, it's you know, modeled to a certain extent, but uh, and probably, I mean, reasonably quite accurate. But on a two two dimensional screen, it's it's not going to be that easy to um, to control. So. Let's say you're climbing at, as we were, say 2,400 feet a minute. What you'd want to do is depressurize at about 1,200 feet a minute. And and if you think about it, that's actually that's all that's almost sort of too fast, isn't it? Because again, if we go, let's go to the. I think it's this view. Is it? No, it's this view. No, it's this view. Oh, it's one of these views. That view. That's it. I think it's number six. So. So we're we're at twenty two thousand feet and we're only depressurized to four. So in fact it's climbed twenty two and the cabin has only climbed four. So in fact it's only climbing at about one fifth of the rate. That's the only that's the rate you need to depressurize, at one fifth of the rate of the outside air. And I think this knob is set for half, although you can't really tell. I mean you can tell by by how much this needle goes up and down. I think I've set it to depressurize and pressurize at a maximum of thousand thousand feet a minute. This is thousands of feet per minute, um, you know. But as long as you've got your bleed air on and you've got some some sort of uh, depressurization set here, then you're you're not going to um, you, you're going to be okay. So let's jump back in here. So well, lastly, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to cut, cut this a bit short because I don't know whether you want to come all the way to Newcastle with me. Let's just see how much further we've got. I'll. Um, We've got, let's say, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 90, 100, 110, 140, 150, 160, 170, 190 miles to go, nautical miles. Now, so 190 nautical miles, uh, over 190 nautical miles an hour is about an hour, isn't it? So we're not. I, you don't want to fly along with me in the cruise for an hour. I mean, you might do, but I can't. <laughs> it would take me a week to upload the video. Um, so I'm going to end it now because that's pretty well um, everything we need to do. All I'm going to do just before I finish the YouTube part of it, obviously I'm going to carry on flying it, but... Uh, as far as you're concerned, what I'll do, we'll just do a quick Frida check. So we've got, uh, as far as the fuel goes, we're still okay. Both tanks agree. We've got 700 uh, pounds still in both tanks. Minus 39 Celsius. So it's a cold old day, isn't it, at this, uh, this altitude? Um, the uh, radios, well, we would check, obviously, the radio frequencies and make sure that we were in communication on the right frequency. The um, engines... Uh, is let's have a good look here. So we're all okay on the engines. The ITT is fine. Maximum torque, props agree. Turbine, everything is in the green, and the oil temperatures and pressures are fine. Um, the D is the direction indicator, which is basically making sure that this thing here agrees with the compass, which is this thing here. So we've got, we can't really sort of see it properly. I mean, you can if you sort of moved across, I suppose. We could have a quick, more of a sort of a direct look at it. So what have we got? We've got three, three exactly. And on the, here we've got three, three exactly. So we've, we're absolutely spot on in terms of uh, compass agreement with the, uh, the uh, electronic instruments, which is what you'd expect really, because, um, you know, with them, um, it's only um, what's the word I'm looking for? Gyroscopic instruments that tend to get out of synchronization after a while. And if we had a gyroscopic um, direction indicator, then we would need to make sure that we reset it, especially after sort of steep turns and any sort of general mucking about. Um, and uh, the A is is uh, for attitude and uh, altimeter. So altimeter, we've got it on the standard setting, and we're flying at the assigned flight level. And the attitude indicator is straight and level, and uh, everything looks fine. Uh, and airspeed, I suppose you could say, you know. So, uh, but basically, it's just to force yourself to do a check once in a while, just to make sure that you don't you don't sort of think. You know, you don't turn into a passenger in this plane and think, "Oh, this is great." No, this plane is 
is is uh, getting me from A to B. I'm just going to sit here and look out the window. You know, these, these things have to be actively managed. Right. So I will see you again um, just before the descent. I'll, um, in the meantime, I'll get uh, the stewardess to make us a coffee and uh, just check the passengers are all fine and uh, perhaps leave the co-pilot in charge while I go back and uh, have a bit of a hobnob with the rich and shameless. I'll talk to you later. And we're back. So, where are we? Well, you can probably see the weather's uh, worsened slightly. We've got a bit of cloud around here. I have calculated that we are about 78 miles away from Newcastle, November Tango. How have I done that? I'll just do, you just do a direct to, uh, what I what I did was I actually loaded the flight plan in. So you go there, you go there, uh, sorry, no, you go, go to the flight plan, you go to the uh, flight plan page, uh, which is down, if that happens, then you can get rid of the cursor and go to the flight plan page and then click on the flight plan, press enter, go to the uh, flight plan itself, get your cursor, it's a bit complicated, go right, and that happens, press clear, go right the way down the bottom to your destination, November Tango, and then click direct to, and then it will say go direct to there, so there we are, 75 miles. Now, um, so that just gives me a very, very sort of rough and ready uh, distance to destination and this is um, you should be able to really get this from from the other um, the other details but you, you can't it's sort of, sort of got pages missing with regard to they may not I may have just haven't found them but anyway the point of all this blethering is that um, we're at 22,000 feet and we're going to want to descend to the runway ideally in an orderly fashion and so we multiply this by three, so we get 66. So we need to know we need we know that we need to sort of start sending about um, 66 miles away, and we're 72. So we're just about nicely set up, aren't we, for for a descent? So we're going to want to start descending now. Is it me? Or did it just go blank then. I think the weather's um, flown into a new weather region. So you don't just point the plane down because you'll rip the wings off. So what we're going to first of all do is um, let's just move. we're going to um, pull the power back a bit. So we pull the power back a bit. We're not at all worried if the speed drops off because we want the speed to drop off. This is the lovely part. This is the free part of every flight. Remember I said that it takes a lot of fuel. Watch the fuel flow go down. It takes a lot of fuel to um, get up to altitude and to cruise at altitude and but the free part is when you glide down and you don't use any fuel at all. So <clears throat> we're going to want to set our altitude to let's say we've been cleared to flight level 140 in the descent so we put 140 and on the altimeter we put ourselves into a descent and we want to go down about uh, let's say 1400 feet a minute it would be plenty, plenty um, and obviously we're, we're going to start climbing up again so let's this so airspeed is going to start climbing so we're going down the airspeed's climbing so we pull the throttle back a bit more fuel flow goes down even more lovely 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 and we're going to let's say we're going to aim to go down about 200 knots so <clears throat> if that's too fast then obviously we can we can change that so we're at we literally. I've got a little bit of a frame lag there. Sorry about that. We're, we're literally about 66 now, and we're 21. So we can afford to be at yeah, 21 at 63. So we're going to be comparing to 63 to 65. So we're probably a little bit fast. So let's put that up a bit. In other words, descend less fast. Good. Now, what do we know about Newcastle, landing in Newcastle? Now, you can get approach plates. Uh, X-Plane doesn't really handle uh, standard instrument departures and standard instrument arrivals, SIDS and STARS, so, um, but that we don't mind that because we're not flying an Airbus. We're flying a general aviation plane, and so um, we'd be quite happy with just a, a normal GA approach. 
you can download an approach plate. The one you're looking for is the ILS, the Instrument Landing System, ILS DME, Distance Measuring Equipment. And I'll pull, I'll drag one across and just so that you can see what I'm looking at. So this is what I'm looking at on the other screen. This is the approach plate for Newcastle. It's the one on the right here that we're interested in. You, I, I've just downloaded these off the internet. You can get these pretty well anywhere now. Um, and here you can see the sort of the standard teardrop approach, okay, the classic teardrop approach. Um, I won't spend too long on this because you can look at your own copy of this, but I'm looking straight away. We've got a, a VHF omnidirectional range finder, VOR, NEW, on 114.25, so that's good for navigating. And we've also got a non directional beacon, an NDB, which is 352 NT for Newcastle, that's, and it even helpfully gives you the Morse code so you can identify it. And you'd think that flying down a runway would be just a case of sort of swinging around and, and flying in, but in fact it's not like driving a car. In most cases what you do is you have to overfly the runway at a certain altitude and then go away from it, turn around and come back. So it's a bit like parking your car by parking it in the garage and then driving it out, turning it around and parking it back in again. Now why don't the planes all crash into each other when they're doing this? The answer is that they do it at different altitudes. So if you come down here to the the lower part you can see that when you're coming in you're at three and a half thousand feet obviously when you land you're at ground level and halfway you are neither up nor down you're at two thousand feet so you come in at three and a half you go out and as you go out you descend to two and then you turn round and as you come back you descend to the runway so that's what I'll be looking at so when I'm referring to um, procedures and things um, you'll be able to see that that's that's really what I'm looking at now let's just check that we haven't uh, exceeded the airspeed now we're still descending at 200 feet let's check the DME against the altitude so we are 56 nautical miles 55 so that's 16 and a half thousand feet we should be at we're at 18.3 so we're too high so we shouldn't have mucked about with it in the first place and we should have carried on <coughs> with our 1400, 1600 feet a minute rate of descent. As we descend, the air is going to get thicker, so we need to cut back on the torque even more because we don't want to overspeed. And that's going to do wonders for our fuel flow. Our fuel flow is now down below 2 ppr times 100, so I suppose it's 200 pounds per hour. So that's great. And we've got, we've got um, absolutely, you know, it's pretty fuel efficient this plane by the look of it. Not at all worried about um, fuel on this plane, other than filling it up. I suppose when you fill it up, it's expensive, but actually you can fly around quite a bit without filling it up. We're going into cloud. Remember what I said about going into cloud. Just concentrate on your instruments. Don't really worry about looking out the window if you're in cloud. And uh, we're about to make a right turn, aren't we? At Gasco, by the look of this. What are the passengers looking at the side at? Not much, pretty boring. Press and press, I've pressed F9, which I've set up for this view on the keypad. If you press it again, it puts you back to the view you're at. So, supposing we were at that view, and I press F9, and I press F9 again, and it takes me back to the, the same view. So, 50 miles, very easy. 50 miles is uh, 15,000 feet. So, what is our altitude? 15,900. So, we're getting there, aren't we? We're we're pretty well there. Sorry to jump around, but I just wanted to see that turn out of the window. There we go. See, I'm a passenger as well as a pilot. I like both both parts of it. Anyway, we're going to concentrate on the cockpit now. So let's just do a little bit of what I was talking about um, in respect of the setup for the descent. Now we said that there's a lovely NDB in Newcastle, which is 352. So we'll go to here and set. 352, so, so 6543. This is, this is uh, the middle digit is the one that's difficult to do here. Where are you? There you are. 352. Um, and in order to display that NDB, we need to come over here and switch this to ADF automatic direction finding and the automatic direction finder 
let's say we've been cleared down to 6,000 feet and hope that the autopilot hasn't already reset itself yeah it has, you see it's too late what we need to do now is put that back in a descent and uh, put it back in the 1600 feet descent just check it's done that 1600 feet descent will be there and that will go down to 6000 feet in fact what I'll do is I'll clear us down to the entry level which was uh, 3,500 wasn't it so 3,500 feet and we 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 need to be over the top of this NDB at um, uh, which is 3:52, yeah, at uh, at uh, when we start to turn away from the runway, and we want to put on the Morse ID for the ADF so that we can check whether we get the NT uh, on the Morse code. Now, as far as the approach procedure goes, let's just select the approach. And I'm hoping it'll have an ILS 25, which is, yes, it does. And that's the one we want. And we want the NT transition, don't we? Because that's the NT beacon that we're aiming for. So let's load that. And if we go back to the flight plan, we can see, don't push the inside. It's not been activated yet. OK. So. Let's get rid of that. So we're say 40 miles, so we should be at 12,000 feet, and we are roughly at 12,000 feet. So we're pretty well there, aren't we? On the uh, on the descent, and we're doing 200 knots, and so I'm just going to we're doing over 200 knots. So I'm just going to pull that back a bit again because I want to keep the descent speed down because we don't really want to do this at the speed of light you know even even a jet wouldn't do an approach at more than 160 knots so let's just uh, be a bit sensible especially as we're coming down below 10,000 feet which is where all the slower planes fly um, we are now um, sorry I've got to finish my coffee so I can give it to the stewardess when we stow things away Talking of which, let's. Uh, I think the doors are still open, so we'll just uh, say, tell everyone to buckle in because we're landing now. Don't open the passenger door, it's the cockpit door. You want to shut? Double shut. There's a rule in general aviation that um, really the pilot shouldn't be disturbed below a thousand feet, and that applies mostly for small aircraft, uh, you know, small singles, single props. The reason for that is that the pilot has a very high workload, especially on landing, and uh, you don't want to be talking to him about the weather. So I had a rule of 1,000 feet. Until we reached 1,000 feet, everyone absolute quiet, and then below 1,000 feet, everyone absolute quiet. The workload on here is obviously slightly higher, and um, you're go you're, you are isolated from the people, so it's not so much a problem here. But, I mean, really, you don't want to stop hobnobbing on the descent and uh, just uh, lock them in you know make sure that they're all but then you know you presumably you'll have someone back there who will be looking after all of that so <clears throat> let's have a look and see there's just we need to just check that we are we are correctly positioned for um, what we're hoping to do there we are we are flying out here and then you've got that's the overhead join you can see here the um, just about see can't you the uh, Newcastle it's a shame this moving map is so small um, no doubt you can fly with it um, but um, it's sort of uh, been supplanted by the much larger I would imagine moving maps that give you much better situational awareness so um, we are going to make do with it because it's better than doing it with a, a slide rule and uh, pencil which is what we used to do but um, I'm going to have to perhaps make a few quick decisions when we get there about uh, what we're going to do in terms of um, turns now the outbound leg from the initial approach fix the NT NDB is uh, depends on your speed I don't know if you possibly noted that there are two teardrops one a smaller one and a larger one and it depends on your speed obviously if you're a slow plane you don't really want to fly a massive great circle 
so they've got us like a small inner track for you and the outbound heading for that is 082 if you are a jet then you will need to fly a larger circle and so your outbound heading from the initial approach fix is 90 degrees this is what I was saying about a degree or two making a big difference so that's 8 degrees which makes a difference on uh, on the uh, outbound of about 6 miles so it puts you on a completely different circuit and so we'll take the <coughs> what do you think inner outer inner outer outer inner inner we'll do the inner one at 82 degrees outbounds I don't know if you can just hear that dash dot dash dash dot is an N and dash is T there you go so we're, we've identified the um, the uh, initial approach fix beacon haven't we but we can turn that off now the ADF off and you can see it's can you see it's come alive here the automatic direction finder now is now pointing towards the Newcastle NT NDB and uh, it's slightly off to our right so that because it, it is actually slightly to the right of the airport so again that's correct we're very happy with that it doesn't give you a distance non-directional beacons are literally that they're just a beacon and in fact they don't have to be a dedicated aviation beacon they can be a radio station or anything so you can tune into a, a local radio station or something we're probably at 3000 there we are we're, we're coming down to 3500 probably slightly um, earlier than we need to and the transition altitude in the UK is 3,000 feet, which means that we can fly at flight levels above 3,000 feet and we fly at altitudes below. So an altitude is, is based on the local pressure setting, a flight level is based on a general regional pressure setting so that everybody uses the same regional one. Here we've got the local pressure setting at... Uh, oh, I'm just going to... Do you hear that beep? I've just shut the throttle forwards because it's telling me that um, it thinks I should have the gear down, which probably means I'm a bit low and slow. But we're at, we're at 140 knots, so I'm quite happy with that. So I've just put the throttle forward a bit, but obviously we don't want to. should have should have paid more attention to the airspeed and the descent there. That was that was pretty uh, pretty dumb. So I was saying just about the. Um, so we're just about to go on to the local pressure setting, aren't we? Which is three zero decimal one five. So let's zoom in and put three zero one five. Can we can choose to go on it now? Three zero decimal one five, and that will give us a true altitude of three thousand five hundred feet above the airfield, as opposed to, or rather, above above. How can I put it? Above sea level, over the airfield. The airfield will be above sea level. In fact, the airfield is elevated at 266 feet above. Um, <clears throat> the runway is 239 feet above the ground. No, of course it isn't. The runway's on the ground. Why not just think, think? The the there are two elevations for the runway: 266 feet and 239 feet. And one of them is um, well. Let's just say let's call it 250 feet. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that at a later date when my brain's working. One's the uh, one's based on the um, Q and H, um, and there, and there's another reading the QFE, which is which is zero at ground level, which is why I'm getting confused. So we'll, we'll we'll go into that when I've got it all straight in my head. Fuel flow's looking nice, isn't it? So where are we? Let's have a look. We are en route to the runway. We are going to want to go instead of the runway, because you imagine that the, the runway was our um, end last waypoint, wasn't it? But in fact, the last waypoint really needs to be the um, the NT beacon. Actually, to get rid of this beeping, what I'm going to do is put down one stage of flaps because if I put down one stage of flaps let's just see whether it's done that
yeah. One stage of flaps, and um, and then that increases the drag, which means that you can push the throttle forward a bit, which means you don't get the annoying your gear isn't down beep. Yeah, so I'm just saying. So really, we don't want NT to be our last uh, uh, our, our point. Now we want sorry, we don't want Echo Golf November Tango to be our last point. We want NT to be our last point. So we're going to procedure. We can click on Enter. We uh, chose the ILS and we chose the NT transition, and we want to activate it. That's the long way round, I should imagine. So what we've done is we're now we're now going towards NT which is uh, slightly more correct in terms of our ILS procedure and it's 13.7 miles away and we would expect the yellow needle to be pointing straight up wouldn't we and it is so that's fine so we're flying straight towards it and then from there we are going to go to the point 84 November Whiskey Charlie and then the other point November Whiskey Charlie 84 and then 54 and then onto the runway at 25 so these are the two waypoints on the way in and at the outbound so this let's say this is the 84 November Whiskey Charlie is obviously the outbound leg and then we turn around and come back so about here we're going to be, want to be about 2500 feet which as I said is the halfway point good <clears throat> Now, the reason why they put a flight plan button on here is so that you can s switch easily between the overhead map and the um, there you go and the and the actual points on the flight plan. And the other thing you can do, of course, is to put it in here. So if we just click a procedure, select approach, do ILS law, NT, enter. Activate enter. Um, you can have there we are. You can have the map on one and uh, the uh, waypoints on the other if you want to. There's no weather. It's been a very good flight. You know, all in all, it hasn't taken long. I mean, to get from South End to Newcastle in this sort of time is 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 uh, you know pretty incredible. It's Obviously, a flight is the only way you could do it, and uh, a direct flight is um, in in a twin would would be pretty much as fast as a jet, and uh, probably a bit cheaper. All is assuming that there was a direct flight from Southend to Newcastle at the time of your convenience. So, um, owning your own private aircraft is uh, you know has its advantages. Now let's um, think even further ahead and on the approach we're going to want to go down the ILS so what's the ILS frequency is 111.5 so in fact it's already set up so in fact if we push to go to there I'm assuming we've set it up and then we make it the active frequency um, and then the uh, approach is 12437 or the tower is 119.7 so let's let's say we'll go straight to tower we're not going to in real life in actual practice because um, there we go <clears throat> and we're flying it on the uh, GPS at the moment which is what's going to be doing the you know set us up on the approach and it's going to fly us outbound and, and then it'll turn us round and it'll fly us and as soon as we start going towards the air runway uh, at an intercept angle of less than 30 degrees at 2000, 2000 feet which is the turnaround uh, altitude then I'll switch over to flying the, on the ILS which means that we'll be switching this from GPS to VLOC and uh, we'll be switching the autopilot to um, from uh, navigation to approach mode um, and you have to have the right uh, frequency dialed in here so that it flies <coughs> you know it knows which ILS it's flying down and the other thing you can do which uh, as I said always helps is just to align these these so that we know what direction we, we should be flying so the course we want to fly is 249 that's the direction of the runway 
and I'm going to put the heading bug on 249 as well because if it all goes wrong and we don't decide to land then I might need to just fly on the heading bug as we fly away and come round for another go. So and also um, this greatly helps with the spatial awareness um, as you come into the runway um, you can it, it, the instruments don't really matter they don't care whether this is pointing in the right direction this this course setting really only comes when you do want to set a certain course um, we our course is going to be dictated to us by the ILS so really it doesn't care what you set this at but it's just for us humans to keep us happy you know keep us happy that we're going in the right direction uh, in the same way as the ADF it gives you a direction and doesn't give you a, a distance this gives you um, a direction but doesn't care about what course you want to fly it will force you to fly the, the correct course so we are 3.4 miles away from the NT NDB the initial approach fix so I don't know if we can see the runway probably not if it's three miles away What's that? That's obviously Newcastle. No, probably should have had a look a bit earlier. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? There's a big runway down there. Of course, I said it was over to the right, didn't I? I said that the um, initial approach fix was to the right of the runway. Right, and it says 2-5 which is uh, you know fits in with our theory doesn't it that we're going to land on runway 25 now we're coming up here let's have them both up we're 1.4 miles away we're going to expect it to fly out on this this leg here the one due east to 84 November Whiskey Charlie and it's telling us it's turning right to 086 which is pretty well east isn't it so that's good so we're very happy about that so it's obviously picked up the approach. Let's just go and sit in the back for a bit. And just, I just think what a great pilot we've got up the front there. It's how we're so glad he's up there and he knows what the hell he's doing and he's not really sort of clinging on by the edges of his fingertips. <clears throat> just hoping that he can get the plane down somewhere flat and level. Newcastle's on the coast as you can see. Durham's well worth a visit. Durham has a fantastic cathedral. I mean, no offence to anyone who lives in Newcastle, but Durham's really nice. And Durham isn't Newcastle. <laughs> A lot of people think it is, <laughs> but it isn't. So where are we? So now we're on the outbound leg, so what do we want to do altogether? Descend to 2,000 feet. So let's go in, descend to 2,000, go to the autopilot. Let's try altitude select and see what happens. <clears throat> Nothing. So let's try descent. And there we go. Always watch your airspeed on the descent. You're going to want to. You know, we don't want to go. To, can't really put it down less than 700 foot pounds. And there we are. Do you see that we just flew over? Flew the ILS. Did you see that flick backwards? So it's behind us now. So here we are, foot pounds times 100. So we've got 707.22. So it's actually read out here 722 foot pounds, but here it's 7, so it's 7 times 100 foot pounds of uh, thrust. And we are descending 2000. And you know, you've got to do all the sensible checks like um, is there a mountain in front of you? The seas in front of you, should the sea be in front of you? All these things, don't underestimate all these checks, they're all very useful. I'm pleased we flew the inner circle, aren't you now? Because I mean, it's small enough for us, isn't it? Not at sort of this sort of speed. Let's do a quick free to check. Fuel looks fine. Radio, yes, we've tuned in. Engine, can we get anything from the No, we can only fly the flight plan. We don't want to fly the flight plan, thank you so much. Radio, engine. Well, let's have a look at the gauges. Everything's green to green, isn't it? Oil, fuel, temperatures, T's and P's, as they say. Uh, DI is um, 
looks uh, fine and is agreeing with the compass as I say this is mainly a compass check so that says east this will be flying east and A for altitude and attitude indicator so we are here now at 2000 feet and we are on the local QNH which is 3015 set 3015 good so this is going to take us round in a circle and as I say then then it's going to take us down to NWC 84 which I'd hazard a guess is 8.4 nautical miles out from the runway and I would hazard a guess that so is this which is why they've called one 84 November Whiskey Charlie and the other one November Whiskey Charlie 84 and here we're about to do our left hand turn aren't we on to 344 look counting down 654 321 seconds now we're going to go into the sea if we don't get our act together so I'm just going to click altitude to hold the altitude that was pretty poor that was pretty poor I put it in a descent and um, let it go through the descent so I'm going to hold the sector safe altitude is is actually um, well let's do it let's do it properly let's go now okay let's recover don't panic put it in a climb once it's stabilized its altitude we'll put it in a climb we'll climb it to 800 feet a minute we'll stow the autopilot we'll feed some power in We'll stow the what's it? Feed the power in because we don't want to stall. We want to climb to two thousand feet. I think I think possibly um, yeah, possibly farting about with that. Took it out of the climb. Anyway, fly the plane. That's the main thing. So we are now heading towards the runway, and as I said, we are now going to want to fly it on the. Um, ILS so we put it over to VHR or localizer and click approach the old approach button has got many a pilot out of a problem I'm sure now it's not doing anything is it so but do we need to panic well at the moment no we don't need to panic because um, if we I'm panicking a bit aren't I <laughs> if we zoom in we can see that we're still intercepting so in fact it's it's quite happy flying along on an intercept path so let's just put that up there for a minute and if we look at the um, we can see that the we are now turning left to heading head the uh, to intercept the runway center line and we're below the glide slope which is where we want to be because we always want to intercept from below the glide slope we're slightly fast so again I'm going to pull back on the power and it's <clears throat> beeping away telling me that it's intercepted the uh, well it's it's sort of stabilized at the altitude which it was at when I started mucking about with this which is, is a bit complicated but if you if you dial this through the altitude that you're flying at it will then stabilize at the altitude that you were at when you when you mucked around with this so 1750 is gonna have to be it and and there's the runway so let's put this let's put this away for the time being now and now let's just concentrate on this so we're on we're flying along so really we're, we're looking at speed now and um, center line and glide slope so let's just concentrate on these and you can see the glide slope is coming down to meet us so we are in a second the plane is going to go down the speeds going up a little bit so we pull back on that and as you go down the glide slope you will drop the gear so let's drop the gear landing lights on gear increases drag so you have to again watch the airspeed not a bad idea now to um, feed in the second degree of flaps so let's have the probably won't be able to see that it's pretty dark in here let's look at the overall position we're, we're okay flaps increase drag don't forget so let's just make sure we're nicely positioned within the, the white band we've got on the runway two 
whites and two reds which is good and the master caution sign which is not so good what's it complaining about RVS ready not reverse not RVS not ready I don't know I presume that means something to do with reversing we don't I don't propose to reverse <laughs> I don't propose to reverse the engines only because reversing the engines requires shifting the throttle into reverse and I don't use keys for the throttles also it's a massive great long runway so it's not really at all worrying that uh, we can't have reverse but I'll cancel that now why why cancel that when you've got the light on well the answer is if another light comes on you wouldn't necessarily know so if we got another warning that uh, made the caution light come on it will make the caution light well it's obviously decided that it wants it on so um, the master we'll leave the master caution light on so we're landing so we're going to do a bum fitch check so brakes are off undercarriage is down a lot we've got three greens brakes are off yes the uh, mixture which is really not that um, well it's more to do with the props isn't it the props aren't fine that's a good so we missed that didn't we so let's find the props gradually the other the other thing we didn't do is um, just adjust the cabin altitude so we'll um, have trouble getting the doors open if we don't <laughs> do that and um, so yeah mixture so that was the props good we've picked that up mixture and hatches and harnesses everybody's sort of strapped in and everything's fine getting a little bit slow on the approach so I'm going to bump the power up a bit which as you can see makes us pitch down slightly because as it gets too slow it tends to sit on its tail to try and carry on flying for as long as possible let's not get too fast now the decision on when to disengage the autopilot is entirely up to you. I mean, you know, really you can you can fly it down as far as you like. I'm very much of the opinion, as you know, that if uh, if the plane is flying fine, then don't disturb it. Uh, but this is about right, so I'm just going to disengage the autopilot and. Um, Whoa! Crash the plane! Oh my god! Not good not good yeah yeah busted the G limit yeah I'm not surprised stalled it on the approach okay okay this is why we fly simulators learn from your mistakes oh how unimpressive was that I am so embarrassed that is terrible that is terrible that is terrible what can I say officer <laughs> it's a new plane yeah, I'm gonna have to be much faster on the approach, aren't I? I'm flying it like a like um like a single engine prop which would, would, would glide down. It didn't the nose didn't drop, did it? And the nose and I even said it was slow. The nose didn't drop, it just stalled in a flat stall. I can only assume that we all spent uh, a week or so in hospital <laughs> and we're all okay. <laughs> Let's put that down as a hard landing, shall we? We should say that's a hard landing, okay? It was a hard lesson to learn and a hard landing. Going to need a new plane anyway because I'm pretty sure the undercarriage wouldn't have survived that. So uh, off to Lloyd's Syndicate again and uh, given the bad news that uh, the replacement plane that we uh, bought with the money that they gave us for the one we crashed in the channel is now... Um, suffered an irreparable a structural damage and uh, not look forward to the premium renewal which I can imagine is probably <laughs> going to be as much as a new plane here. anyway right well I'll leave it there I mean there's not much I can say about that is it it was perfect until we crashed wasn't it that flight oh dear oh dear okay fine I'm going to have to do some circuits perhaps next video will be circuits right I, I'm going to leave it there alright sorry about that Sorry, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm as disappointed as you are. What can I say? I'll, um, I'll, um, <laughs> I'll see you all when you come out of A&E. I'll, um, uh, come back soon. Bye.